search applications by appointing non-qualified adjudicators. By these and other means, the Harper government is actively suppressing truth, understanding, diversity, and tolerance. In these respects, it is no stretch to say that the current government's practices and policies on science are undermining Canada's aspirations to be a civilized society. Now this might seem harsh, particularly if you're a supporter of the Conservative Party, but I assure you, this is not a partisan message. We're not talking about a bad party, we're talking about bad policies. I suspect that many on the political right are prepared to stand behind basic freedoms of inquiry and speech and to support these freedoms being upheld for scientists working inside and outside the Canadian government. I hope they raise their voices with ours to say as much privately within their ranks, if not publicly. And I hope that this event today plays some part in drawing attention to the seriousness of the threats to our society that the Harper government's policy on science and science funding represent. All of us, of whatever political persuasion, can begin today to peel back those policies in the name of truth, understanding, and building a better world. That's why we're here today, and that's what's at stake. Thank you very much. Our next speaker is Professor Craig Perrin. He is a professor of history and he is the vice president external of the York University Faculty Association. Thank you. I bring you greetings from my colleagues in the York University Faculty Association who are delighted to be uh, to vote to co-sponsor this event and look forward to working with the organizations that built this in the future. Can't hear you. You got audio. Can't hear. All right. <laughs> that better? Uh, what I simply said was that the York University Faculty Association was delighted to and and keen to support this event and to in the future to work on on similar projects. Um, I'm speaking not as a natural scientist, but as a member of the humanities and social science faculty. The scientific method is important to us too, well, for those of us who work in those, those areas of intellectual inquiry. We do research in libraries and archives and other publicly funded institutions and agencies like Stats Canada. We build our analysis on the basis of evidence that we find there. And I'm a historian, I'm a former president of the Canadian Historical Association, and I and my colleagues are deeply troubled by what's been happening to those research-based institutions and agencies. We're concerned that the capacity of historians, genealogists, writers, journalists, students, history buffs of all kinds, their ability, their capacity to research and write about our past is now seriously compromised. We were shocked to see the savage cuts in funding at Parks Canada that led to the layoffs of a thousand people, including a huge number of historical researchers. One of the biggest collections of historical research that has been done in Canada for many, many, many years. We were shocked to see the elimination of the National Archives Development Program, which sustained local archives across the country, little local community archives. We were shocked to see the cuts to Stats Canada, and, and Stats Canada staff, and then, of course, the elimination of the long form census, which we learned last in the last week in the newspapers has meant that it's an almost unusable document for the latest census statistics in public policy formation because there's nothing to compare it with. And we've been in a state of utter disbelief at what's been happening at Library and Archives Canada, once an internationally respected institution, of uh, research institution. They put a freeze on new acquisitions. They're undertaking to offload responsibility for collecting documents down to the provinces and the municipalities that are already strapped for funds. They've shut down interlibrary loans. That's appalling. They've, they're clearly, uh, they've slashed 450 staff, many of those uh, key people in the libra uh, professional librarians and, and archivists. They're showing an appalling disrespect for professional standards in their internal hiring and management policies, including an edict that came out last spring requiring all staff basically to avoid going to professional conferences because these were dangerous places where they might say unfortunate things. They've announced that the digitization of records, this is the, uh, the, the icing on an already appalling case, the digitization of records will now be taken over by a private sector organization that will be responsible for the digitization over the next 10 years, and during that period we will be charged for use of those documents. 
All of these moves reflect an attempt to make it more difficult to engage in evidence-based research, and they've been undertaken without adequate consultation with people who are knowledgeable in these fields and who have been protesting loudly against them. That would be bad enough, but at the same time, the government is attempting to shape a vision of Canada and of its history and heritage that's based on ideology and mythology rather than solid research. They poured $28 million into celebrations of the War of 1812 that promoted a distorted, ideologically driven view of that event. Even worse, they've invaded the, the Canadian Museum of Civilization to make it into a feel-good place that meets their own view of the past, but no longer has the research capacity to do the kind of thorough research for which it was formerly so what respected internationally. Canadians have been protesting these changes in all of these institutions I've been talking about. Historians, archaeologists, anthropologists, and many, many more. But it's essential for all of us in all fields of intellectual inquiry who believe in strong, well-funded public institutions dedicated to, seriously, to serious scientifically-based research and who believe in rational, evidence-based public policy development, it's essential for all of us to stand together and say, enough. enough.